In chapter five, part four, Hess's law, we're gonna use a different method to calculate delta H reaction. So Hess's law states, so Hess's law states, if a reaction is carried out in a series of steps, delta H reaction is equal to the sum of the parts. So what does this really mean? Because that sounds nice, but it doesn't really tell us anything. So when we think about Hess's law, one of the things we kind of want to think about is the fact that if we wanted to know the distance between place A and place B, and we knew it took some amount of energy to get here and some amount of energy to get here, we could calculate for this region and we are gonna, instead of making that a delta, we're going to make this A. So well, let's call that F. So if we know the A to B transition is delta H equals Y, and the B to F transition is delta H equals to X, then the F to A transition is a question mark. And so we can basically say that the A to F transition is the sum of the B to F plus A goes to B, where delta H is X and delta H equals Y. When we add these together, we'll have A plus B goes to F plus B. And delta H equals X plus Y. We can cancel out anything we see on both sides. So the A to F transition is just the sum of the parts. So this is a long way to say we can calculate delta H for an unknown reaction if we know another way to get there. So Hess's law is often kind of tricky for students because they get overwhelmed. I think about this like a crossword puzzle or a Sudoku puzzle, where the goal is to move different informational parts in order to see what we can learn. So let's look at this equation. So we wanna calculate delta H reaction for the combustion of methane. Now, you might be like, mm, Dr. Malcolm, you solved this in a previous one. That's entirely true and that's okay. So before we get started, I wanna write down what our goal is. Our goal, is to determine delta H for the reaction using the reactions provided. So sometimes students can look at this and kind of figure out the answer, but we wanna make sure we're using this information. So we want to combine these two in order to figure out this. So what is the difference between these two? If we look at this first equation here, which I will annotate with a green number one, and this one will be a two. So if we look at equation one, the difference between equation one and the equation we care about is the fact that the water is a gas, not a liquid. So we're going to figure out how much the phase transition plays a role in this. So in this case, we're going to add Number one, the way it is, so CH4 gas plus two O2 gas goes to CO2 gas plus two H2O gas. And based on the information, delta H equals, whoops, negative 802 kilojoules, okay? So then we're gonna add number two. So we don't need to make any changes because this gas and this gas need to be on opposite sides of the equation. So we're gonna take our two H2O gas 
plus 2 H2O liquid. And we know that delta H equals negative 88 kilojoules. And I'm going to add these together. And so then we're going to have CH4 gas plus 2O2 gas plus 2H2O gas. And that's going to go to CO2 gas plus 2H2O gas plus 2H2O liquid. Now, from here, we're going to cross out anything we see on both sides. So we're going to get rid of the two gases. So it's always a good idea to rewrite our equation. So we have CH4 gas plus 2O2 gas gives us CO2 gas plus 2H2O liquid. We want to verify that this equation that we just made is the same as the equation that we want to calculate the answer for. Because if it's not, then we didn't actually use Hess's law correctly. So it is. So the delta H reaction is equal to negative 802 kilojoules plus, 82, plus negative 82 kilojoules, which gives us negative 890 kilojoules. So what we can see in this equation is we basically modified the equations that we had to determine delta H reaction. So this one was not difficult. So let's look at the next one. So in this case, we want to calculate delta H reaction for one mole of carbon solid plus half a mole of O2 to give us carbon monoxide. So what is the delta H of that? So uh, one thing that students always often wonder is, well, how do we have half moles? So we're going to learn about that in the next video in chapter five, part five. But in these questions, you just need to use the information that's provided. So we know that we want to calculate this. And then we have two equations. So I'm going to go ahead and label those one and two. That way, when I talk about doing things to equation one and two, we can figure out what I'm talking about. So when we look at these equations, if we look at the first one, we can see that the carbon is on the right side of the equation, so is the oxygen, but there's no carbon dioxide in the equation that we're trying to create. So let's look at the second one. The carbon monoxide is on the reactant side, but we need it to be on the product side. So we're going to use number one as is, means, which means that we're just going to rewrite that equation. So we're gonna use one carbon solid plus O2 gas goes to CO2 gas, which gives us a delta H of negative 393.5. So let's think about number two. So when we look at this, we know that we need carbon monoxide to be a product. So we're going to flip equation two. So we are basically going to spin it around this arrow to where we have CO2 gas goes to carbon monoxide gas plus half a mole of O2 gas. And so the question becomes, what do we do with the delta H of this? So when we flip the equation, so when we flip the equation, what happens to delta H? So in, whoa, wrong color. So in flipped equations, delta H changes signs. So basically in this case, the delta H of this flipped reaction is going to become delta H equals positive 283.0 kilojoules. So now we can go back and start totaling up our equations. So we're gonna have carbon solid plus O2 gas plus CO2 gas goes to CO2 gas plus carbon monoxide gas plus half a mole of O2 gas. So before we look at the delta H's, let's make sure we got the right equation. So the CO2's are both going to cancel out. So what happens with this oxygen on both sides? So it's not the same we have a half a mole on the right and a whole mole on the left. 
So we're going to subtract half a mole of O2 from both sides, which is going to cancel this out, and we're going to come to having a half a mole here. So now we can rewrite our equation to where we have carbon solid plus half a mole of O2 gas goes to carbon monoxide gas. This, if we look back, is exactly what we started with, or what we hope to end with. So our delta H of reaction is going to equal negative 393.5 kilojoules plus 283.0 kilojoules, which is going to give us negative 110.5 kilojoules. And so that's the delta H of this reaction. So in this case, we learned that if you flip an equation, the delta H is just going to be the equal and opposite sign. So let's look at another reaction where we want to calculate delta H reaction for two carbons plus H2 gas goes to C2H2 gas. So now we've been provided three equations that I'm going to label in colors, one, two, and three. This way, when we talk about what we're doing to these equations, you can easily reference that. So again, all of these equations would be provided for you. So what we're going to try to do is manipulate them. So the first thing we want to do is look at each equation independently. Trying to look at all of them together is complicated. So let's just look at equation one. In equation one, only one of the items in this reaction is present in the equation. The C2H2 is a reactant instead of a product. So we're going to flip equation one. And so we're going to flip it right around the um, arrow to where we have two CO2 gas plus H2O liquid goes to C2H2 gas plus five halves O2 gas. And so in this case, our delta H is going to equal positive 1,299.6 kilojoules. Okay, so let's look at equation two. So the thing with equation two is we really wanna think about it apart from equations one and three. So when we look at equation two, the only part of the equation that's present is the two is the carbon. So it turns out we need to multiply two, equation two by two in order to get this carbon to match that. So now let's look at that. So we're going to multiply two by two. So we're going to take our two carbon solids plus two O2 gas gives us two CO2 gas. So everything just got a stoichiometric coefficient of two, but our delta H reaction in that case is now going to be two times negative 393.5 kilojoules, which is equal to negative 787 kilojoules. Okay, so now we've got two equations. So the third equation, it's always worth noticing, like, is this equation part of what we need? It is, and so we have the H2, which we see in both components. So we're just going to use it as is. So we have H2 gas plus half a mole of O2 gas gives us H2O liquid. And so in this case, delta H is the same, which is 200, negative 285.8. So now we're going to sum this all up. So it's important to make sure that everything that is on the left side of the arrow stays on that side and everything on the right stays on the right. So we're going to start with our 2CO2 gas plus H2O liquid plus 2 carbon solids plus 2O2 gas plus H2 gas plus half a mole of, o, of O2 gas. So now we're actually going to move our arrow a little bit more in the center. And so now we have our arrow in the middle. And so on this side, we have C2H2 gas plus five halves of O2 gas 
plus 2 CO2 gas plus H2O liquid. So from here, before we even look at the delta H's, I always advocate that we cancel out anything we don't need. So the, we have two CO2s. Okay, well, those can go away. We have H2O liquid on both sides. And now we have the carbon, the hydrogen, a lot of oxygens, and some on the other side. So if we total these up, it turns out that we'll get five halves, otherwise known as 2.5. O2 on the left and five halves of oxygen on the other side. So we're gonna make all those go away. So now let's rewrite it just to make sure to where we have two carbon solids plus H2 gas gives us C2H2 gas. So this is, if we look back at the beginning, what we were trying to make. And so now we can take our delta H's, so delta H free action equal to positive 1299.6, negative 787 kilojoules, negative 285.8 kilojoules. So when you add all of these together, you end up with 226.8 kilojoules, which is positive. So you may have noticed that sometimes I include the positive sign and sometimes I don't. Um, Mostly I do that to give myself a frame of reference. So in Hess's law, you want to be able to manipulate the equations provided, you may not need them all, to create the equation that you're trying to solve for. And so the equations will be provided for you.